Welcome back, another training vlog. We got a Saturday training session and a Tuesday training session. I didn't get my Monday session on video because I was at my physical therapy clinic a little bit earlier recording and I can't be recording a bunch when it's really busy and there's patients and stuff due to HIPAA. So didn't record the Monday, but we did this, the five by five squats, two sets again. So today's topic of discussion with weightlifting is gonna be a burnout. Family. Not quite that type of burnout. I'm talking about the burnout that everybody's ever experienced in any sort of endeavor or task or long-term event that they have partaken in. So there's weightlifters who have experienced burnout and there's weightlifters who are going to experience burnout. And some of the signs of knowing that you're experiencing burnout is one, you dread going to the gym. You dislike the fact that you have to complete a weightlifting workout. Uh, two, you just feel tired all the time. It's hard to get motivated for the gym. You need external substances like a lot of pre-workout, a lot of caffeine, just hardly anything to get you kind of motivated to get to the gym and to get your workout in. The other one is that you just don't find pleasure in lifting, uh, doing weightlifting exercises anymore. It just kind of feels like a task and it feels like every day, like it's something that is very monotonous to you. It doesn't have that unique spark and original fun that it used to have when you first began. And the things that I've noticed that cause the burnout, I was thinking about cutting down to the 67s, be good for me, is gonna be whenever you've been doing the same program for a while, you haven't made too many changes in the program, or you've also plateaued in a lot of your lifts or your strength movements. A couple different ways I like to combat the burnout is one, you take time away from weightlifting and do other athletic endeavors or other sorts of training that you enjoy. Maybe like a four to six week block of something different. I like to get in a new environment, train somewhere different with different people and a different equipment so that it's, it's new to you. Next is to also realize that weightlifting is a very long term endeavor that requires a lot of consistency and just showing up for them. Not every session has to be the best. Not every session has to PR. You just kind of got to get in and do the work. So just remember just getting in there and doing the basic work and not pushing yourself too hard sometimes will pay off in the long term because you won't burn yourself out as much. The other way is looking at the external factors like managing your stress, managing your sleep, and managing your nutrition. If you're way stressed out over other things in your life, sometimes it's good to take a little step back from weightlifting and focus on the other aspects in your life and get those in order so that you can put more efforts to weightlifting. If your nutrition's really off, you're not getting enough protein, your carbohydrate intake's really low, or your fat intake's low, your hormones are gonna be off, you're not gonna have the energy that you need in the gym to perform, and you're not gonna be able to build that muscle and recover from those heavier workout sessions, leaving you feeling drained and low on energy and that you're just really beat up. Next is if you're not getting that sleep, it's gonna be really hard to recover. Sleep is most important when it comes to recovering from weightlifting, hands down. So if you're getting four to five hours of sleep per night, your weightlifting training is not gonna be optimal. You will need every bit of at least seven to nine hours a night for sure to make sure that you're recovering mostly. And seven, you're really kind of pushing it, especially if it's not good quality sleep. It's gonna be really hard to recover from those sessions if you're only getting seven hours of poor quality sleep. So taking a step back from the talk on burnout, here's my last set of five by fives of 200 for a five by five. We have a max out in two weeks. I'm looking to do close to around, I would say 225 to 230, hopefully for a set of five. Uh, I'm thinking I can definitely do that. It's gonna be a grinder, but I'm pretty sure I can hit at least 225 for a set of five. So finishing up on our discussion about burnout, ultimately it's in your hands to figure out what's gonna work best for you. These are tips that I use to notice when I'm beginning to experience burnout and then how I combat that burnout to keep myself progressing in the gym and to keep myself happy and that I really still enjoy getting in the gym even though I've been doing this things for like seven to eight years. It tends to really wear on you after a while and you kinda just wanna take a break. So take those breaks Make sure that the breaks are something different that keeps you active and keeps you getting strong though. So on our Tuesday workout here, our snatch balance grind. It's gonna be a rough one. Three sets of three at 110 and three sets of three at 120. This was a three by three at 110 and a three by three at 120. 120 is actually a PR for me, I'm pretty sure. I've never done 120 kilo snatch balance, uh, mainly because it's it's been a long time since I pushed them that heavy. Not even, like these 110s aren't bad actually. It's, and also because I've never just felt that good going heavy on snatch balances. Mainly because one, I'm just terrible at them and I just need to get better. I'm, this is probably what I gotta do, right? So where we are now in the training cycle, we're getting close to finishing up this higher volume squats and deadlifts. And then we're gonna do a max out on a five by five. Then we're gonna kind of start getting into a little bit higher volume of the lifts themselves. 
and then progress more towards some intensity stuff coming up within the next month or two as the American Open Finals is right at the beginning of December. So looking forward to getting into that. From today, the American Open Finals is 14 weeks out. God, 120. Well, that sounds like it's really, really far. That's actually not very far when it comes to training and how fast time flies whenever you're working full time. Ugh. It's gonna be here before you know it, and I'm ready for it. Oh, that was tough. You would think, like snatch 144. Should be able to do like snatch balances at 150, 160, pretty easy, but I've always been garbage at snatch balances. It didn't matter like how many I did. I've just always been really bad at them. So that kind of brings up another point of discussion is your snatch balance in comparison to your actual snatch. I've seen a lot of videos of people who have snatched, you know, 140 ish, 150 ish. Doing snatch balance is up around like 150, 160 kilos. Uh, every bit of, you know, 10 to 15 kilos more than the regular snatch. And I am definitely not up there, that's for sure. I don't think I could snatch balance 150, 155, but. I've never tried to get that high, especially now where I'm at as I'm starting to get a little bit more uh, experience under my belt with the snatch balances. So I wonder where I'm kind of lying with my actual one rep max. I wouldn't mind doing one in the coming weeks or something. Our next exercise here after the snatch balances were no hook, clean triples with a jerk at the end. As you can see, I'm not standing the cleans up, mainly because one, my legs are already fatigued from the back squats that I did yesterday, the, five, the two five by fives. And personally, me standing up 125 kilos in a clean is absolutely nothing. I don't need to stand that up. It's not going to give me any sort of stimulus that's going to build me strength. But what it's actually going to do is be able to keep me not as fatigued so I can focus on my actual clean technique. These no hook cleans are actually really good at focusing on hitting good specific positions and keeping the bar close so that as you get to the top of the hip and that upper thigh, you don't blast the bar out off your thighs and create more horizontal displacement of the clean. So if my legs are super fatigued, I won't be able to focus as much on the technique, hence why I don't feel there's an importance to standing up these cleans. And here is the five by five medium grip deadlifts. I recorded all five, but two in the middle were just absolutely god awful whenever I recorded them. Like as I stood it up, all you could see was my lower legs. I don't know what I was thinking when I set the camera up, but so I didn't even include those ones. So it's only gonna show three of these. Still getting used to these medium grip deadlifts. I definitely feel my whole upper back and thoracic area being taxed more to keep the bar tight and keep my lats tight. Then we finish with the same status quo, hip exercises, shoulder exercises, and ab exercises. So that's the end of the video. I appreciate you watching. Uh, as you see me, keep training and, and really going through the trials and tribulations of training, especially leading up to a competition. Uh, it's not all roses and PRs as you'll see on social media. So I'm really trying to expose you to what it's like to be a weightlifter and, and trying to really get, or I wouldn't say even like a weightlifter, but an amateur weightlifter, honestly. Somebody who does this as a, a really extreme hobby, um, working full time as a physical therapist. So I'm, I'm not your average weightlifter that's doing this full time. But as you can see, it's got a lot of pain and suffering to it, but a lot of fun as well. Thanks for watching.